Hare Krishna. Welcome to the Bhakti Shastri classes. Uh, we are starting a new book today, Nectar of Devotion, or which is the summary study by Srila Prabhupada on Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So before we get started, as usual, let us recite the Mangalacharan prayers. So I will share my screen and we will recite the prayers. The screen audible, uh, or sorry, visible. Yes, please. Okay, great. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Soyam Rupaha Kadamakyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vantikam Shri Guru Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunivadi Paschatya Deshatarine He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namona Maha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shrivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Okay, so let's get started with huh? what happened. Hmm. The Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, I will need to share my screen again. Okay. Is the PowerPoint visible? Okay. Yep. Great. Thanks. So, we are starting a brand new book, Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The previous book that we completed few weeks back was Sri Upadeshamritam, also written by none other than Srila Rupa Goswami. And this one also is written by Srila Rupa Goswami. And Srila Prabhupada has written a summary study on this book or this Shastra, this scripture, Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, called Nectar of Devotion. It's not a summary study, actually. It's a pretty detailed study. So I am not sure why Srila Prabhupada called it a summary study. He is being very humble. But it's a fairly detailed study. And it contains all the important points uh, of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's just that the verses, like we see in Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, the verses are not there uh, verse by verse, um, in the sense that with word by word meaning, translation, purport. But if you look at the verses of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Nectar of Devotion, you will see that uh, the nectar of devotion, almost a paragraph by paragraph, is a purport on the verses of Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. 
we will go into some more detail as we go along about all these topics. So before we go along, Srila Prabhupada has dedicated uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu to the six Goswamis who are known as Shad Goswamis. Shad means six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Their names are right here. Rupa, who is the author of Shri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami. Then Sanatana Goswami, his elder brother. Then Raghu Yugau, the two Raghus, who are Raghunath Das Goswami and Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. Raghu Yugau, and then Sri Jiva, Jiva Goswami, and Gopalakau, Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So six of these Goswamis are there, Rupa, Sanatana, Raghu Yugau, two Raghus, Jiva and Gopala Bhatta Goswami. So these are the six Goswamis who are the most revered Acharyas in our Sampadaya. And uh, they are in the disciplic succession of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they have in various aspects and capacities established the foundation of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta, Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya in terms of the theory as well as the practice. So uh, we will, in every class, we will sing first two verses of the Shad Goswami Ashtakam. It is a Ashtakam, which means eight verses, just like we have Damodar Ashtakam or Jagannath Ashtakam. This one is another very famous Ashtakam among Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Shad Goswami Ashtakam. But that would take a long time every week. So we will just sing the first two verses. It is very nice if you can memorize the whole one, all the eight verses, or from time to time, at least without even memorizing, sing it yourself with meaning. Sometime we can do a class, a separate class on word by word meaning to understand the Shad Goswami Astakam in detail. So my wife here will sing the, we, will, we can do lead follow. So uh, she will sing line by line. And you can repeat line by line for those who want to do that. So you can unmute and repeat. This is in the <clears throat> meter called Shardula Vikriditam. This is the most famous verses in the Shardula Vikriditam meter, which contains 19 syllables. And uh, many other verses which we sing in Shardula Vikriditam, we say it is like the Swami Astakam meter. So this is sort of like the foundational Shad Goswami Ashtakam is the foundational verses in the uh, Shardola Vikriditam meter. So it has a very, very beautiful tune. And please sing along. Lead follow. One, one line each. Krishna Ketana Gana Nartana Paro Prema Amritam Bonihi Chaitanya Kripa Bharo Bhuvi Bhuvo Bharabhantarako Chaitanya Kripa Bharo Bhuvi Bhuvo Bharabhantarako Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yuga Shri Jeeva Gopala Nice. Let's read the, I'll read the meaning. So here it says, I offer my respectful obeisances. Obeisances means pranam. 
to unto the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jeev Goswami, and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So this is the translation of the last line. Who are always engaged in chanting the holy name of Krishna and dancing. So these Goswamis are always engaged in Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana. So you can see here Kirtana Gana singing Gana means like in a song way and Nartana dancing. So they are not like serious sannyasis who are just sitting with a very serious face. They are very you know engaged in the devotional activities. They are just like the ocean of love of God. So Prema Amrita Ambonidhi. Prema Amrita Ambonidhi. The ocean of Prema Amrita. And they are popular with both the gentle and with the ruffians. Dhira Adhira. Dhira means the gentle or the sober and Adhira. Everybody used to, they were, they, they were themselves so gentle that all the Nice people and not so nice people would love them. Dhira, Adhira, Jana, Priyau. Because they are non-envious of anyone. Priya, Karau. They were very loving to others as well. And whatever they do, they are all pleasing to everyone. And they are fully blessed by Lord Chaitanya. Shri Chaitanya Kripa Bharau. The Kripa of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than Krishna, is fully uh, bestowed on them and they are fully blessed by Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Thus they are engaged in missionary activities. Bhuvi bhuvau bhara vahantarakau. So missionary activity is meant to deliver all the conditioned souls in this universe. Bhuvi, this earth or this universe. Whoever is afflicted by material uh, problems, they are here to uh, give them deliverance from material problems. So that is the translation. We will not go through the translation every week, but since the first class, we are going through it. So next verse. Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipuno Sadharma Samsthapaka Again, for sake of time, we will not do a very detailed analysis, but one thing, Nana Shastra Vicharanai Kanipunao. So they were composing new, new Nana Shastra. So they were creating the Shastras and they were meditating on the Shastras as well as creating the Shastras and they were Nipuna. Nipuna means they were expert at this activity and you will see through Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu how Rupa Goswami, it's one of his, it's his greatest work. Well, I have seen some, you know, mind-blowing work by Sri Rupa Goswami. Uh, far, far beyond, but that he kept it very personal. He didn't uh, share it far and wide. So, but in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu itself, you will see how brilliant, what is the brilliance of Sri Rupa Goswami. So anyway, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswamis, namely Sri Sanatana Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami and Sri Jiva Goswami and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami who are very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing 
eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus, they are honored all over the three worlds. And they are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in transcendental loving service of Sri Radha and Krishna. Okay. So that is these are the two verses we will sing every week. Now we will also sing four more verses which are for memorization. So all the Bhakti Shastri students are required to memorize these verses and their translations as I have given in this slide. So I have taken all these translations because there is it's not nectar of devotion is not like nectar of instruction where it's like a verse by verse, word by word translation per word. It's not in that format, but these are very important verses and Srila Prabhupada had translated it elsewhere. So I have taken those translations. So let's start. Again, we'll do lead follow. And uh, during the course of the uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu series, we will cover these verses in detail. So please repeat after me. Anya Bhilashita Shunyam Jnana karma dhyana vritam Jnana karma dhyana vritam Anukulyena krishnanu Anukulyena krishnanu Shilanam bhakti ruttama Shilanam bhakti ruttama So the meter of all these verses is Anushtup, eight syllables per line. But anyway, the important part is, this is a very, very important verse, which gives the definition of pure bhakti. So this is bhaktir uttama. It is telling what is uttama bhakti, the topmost bhakti. We will analyze it and do a surgical analysis of it when we come to it pretty soon uh, in the next uh, class or maybe the next one or two classes. So I'll just read the translation and move on for sake of time because we have a lot to cover. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure, or we could say topmost, uttama, pure devotional service, uttama bhakti. The source of this translation is from a purport in Bhagavad Gita as it is by Srila Prabhupada in text number 7.16. Okay, so this verse is defining what is uttama bhakti, the topmost bhakti. Very quickly, I will just bring out the points. That topmost bhakti, as all of you who have gone through Bhagavad Gita know very well, is that anya abhilashita shunyam, no other material desires. Anya abhilasha, abhilasha or abhilashita means desires. Shunya, zero, no other desires. In even the domain of jnana or karma, etc. So it's completely anavritam, devoid of any such uh, material desires, even of in the spiritual category of jnana as well. What is uttama bhakti? Uttama bhakti is anushilanam. Anushilanam means seva or being engaged in. What engaged in what? Anukulyena. Anukul means favorable. So favorable engagement towards who? Krishna. So, favorable engagement to Krishna in a way which is not motivated by any material desires or even any desire of spiritual jnana, etc. So, just the desire to do favorable seva of Krishna is Uttama Bhakti. This is Rupa Goswami's definition of Uttama Bhakti. We will go through more details in the subsequent class. Another Definition, this is from Narada Pancharatra. And another definition of pure devotional service or Uttama Bhakti. And we will also show how this definition and the previous definition are exactly the same. We will make that comparison later. So, let's recite this verse. Sarvapadhi Vinirmuktam Sarvapadhi Vinirmuktam Tatparatvena Nirvanam Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Ruchyate So Sarva Upadhi Vinir Muktam All these Upadhis, titles we give up So one should be free from all material designations 
and by Krishna consciousness must be cleansed of all material com contamination. Tat paratvena nirmalam. He should be restored to his pure identity in which he engages his senses in the service of the proprietor of the senses. Rishi kena means the uh, engaging the senses and Rishi Kesha means the master of the mm -hmm. senses which is Krishna. So serving by all our senses so there is again engagement you engage your senses senses are not supposed to be idle so engagement of the senses um, for Krishna without any material desire for any upadhis or any you know returns even in terms of pride or some sort of recognition None of that is the topmost bhakti. Okay, this one. Uh, now, as you can see, these two verses, 1.1.11 1. 1. and 12. So they will come pretty soon in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu study. <coughs> this next one will come much later, 1.2.34. 1. I'll explain what these numbers mean in just a second. But let's just recite this verse. Ataha Shri Krishna Namadi no one can understand the transcendental nature of the name form quality and pastimes of Shri Krishna through his materially contaminated senses. Only when one becomes spiritually saturated by the transcendental service to the Lord, uh, only when one becomes spiritually saturated by the transcendental service uh, to the Lord are the transcendental name, form, quality and pastimes of the Lord revealed to him. So this kind of the purpose of this verse uh, is to some people ask, why can't I see Krishna? You know, all these logicians, analysts, scientists. Oh, you know, I can I can see, you know, show me, you know, like a empirical proof. And so much discussion is going on around these days. Show me the empirical proof. Where is God? Where is soul? Where is this? Where is that? I'm sorry, Krishna cannot. He cannot be seen through a telescope or a microscope. You cannot build such a telescope or microscope. And then, you know, conquer Krishna. I will force Krishna to be seen. Like, you know, you can say like, you know, the atoms were not to be seen. Now man has built this wonderful microscope and galaxies and all are there. Man has built this wonderful telescope and forced nature to reveal itself. Fine, we can force maybe material nature to a certain extent to reveal itself. We cannot force Krishna to reveal uh, himself. The only way that Krishna will reveal himself is by our bhakti and bhakti means loving surrender loving taking shelter then he reveals himself out of love not out of force last one uh, nice. yeah so last one is devotional re renunciation what is renunciation so the purpose of this to memorize is what is vairagya doesn't mean you leave everything and go to the jungle. That's not the meaning of Vairagya. So what is known as Yukta Vairagya. And there's another verse after this one which is called Phalgu Vairagya. Phalgu means false Vairagya. That's not a verse to be memorized but it's still a very important verse. You should memorize it but it will not be asked in the test. So in the test only these four verses are there but that one is also important. It is the next one 256. Anyway, so this is showing, telling what is real Vairagya means stay in the material world but keep yourself mentally detached from everything material and mentally attached to everything that is related to Krishna even though it may look material like going to the temple. Temple is a material building. It is also made of wood and cement but it is in relation to Krishna. So doing let's say or listening to this class or reading Bhagavad Gita it's also a book it's no different than, let us say, a, a, I don't know, Bollywood, Hollywood magazine book or some other book. It's also made of the same paper. But since that book is related to Krishna, that uh, attachment to such things, even though it appears material, is a 
is called vairagya yukta vairagya anyway let us uh, mm -hmm. recite this verse we won't do this kind of even brief analysis from now on i'm just doing it because it is the first class today anasaktasya vishayan anasaktasya vishayan yatharham upayunjataha When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. So possessiveness is like you know just material attachment one is above possessiveness which means spiritual attachment but material detachment that is yukta vairagya okay so these are the four verses those who are going to do the bhakti shastri test please start memorizing these and uh, even others who are not doing should memorize because it is just a very nice thing to memorize these and many more verses i have a list of verses from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which are good for memorization in general. So, you know, uh, if you want, I can share some of those. But these four are recommended by, not recommended, required by Mayapur Institute, uh, from where we are doing our Bhakti Shastri syllabus. Okay, introduction to Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So, before we start, I would just like to say that I am no expert I'm not even half an expert, not even 10%, not even 1% expert in this deep topic. So I have just, you know, put some effort in reading, tried to understand from various sources that my Guru Janas, my seniors have told me, and I'm doing my little effort to share it with you all. So please forgive me for any uh, mistakes or any shortcomings. And uh, this is a very deep scripture. It is beyond me. And I'm just doing my little part uh, to, to share, you know, what I have learned with you all. So we are co-travelers in this journey. I'm just a facilitator or a proxy for what I have learned from my seniors, previous acharyas, and our Guru Parampara. So with that, understanding i will move forward okay so shri bhakti rasamrita sindhu where are we one second yeah so what is shri bhakti rasamrita sindhu what is it so we will dissect each word soon but basically it is the law book of Krishna Bhakti. Srila Prabhupada calls it the law book. So, in case of any confusion, in case of uh, resolving any doubts, the place that we go to for authoritative answer is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's the law book. It's like the constitution. So, this is the final word on Krishna Bhakti for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It's the most, one of the most I have written of course, there is Srimad Bhagavatam. There are others, so I didn't want to write the most, but it is still, I would say, the most important scripture for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Rupa Goswami is our topmost Acharya, and this is his most important work. And here he has laid down the entire science of Krishna Bhakti, how to do it, and... Um, how to move forward in our Krishna Bhakti all the way to attaining Krishna Prema, which is the final goal of all of all sadhakas. So this is obviously has been written by Sri Rupa Goswami, and it has plenty of references from the Shastras, Srimad Bhagavatam, Padma Purana, etc. etc. Mainly from Srimad Bhagavatam. So many references are there. So the principles of Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu are no different than Srimad Bhagavatam. But uh, Srila Rupa Goswami has organized and presented this in a very, very wonderful way. 
Srila Rupa Goswami received these teachings from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on Krishna Bhakti for 10 straight days on the banks of the Ganges or the Ganga River in Prayag. So, Sri Rupa Goswami is an eternal associate of Lord Sri Krishna. He is in the spiritual world, he is Rupa Manjari. Rupa Manjari is the topmost, is the number one uh, maid servant, we say in English, but we say Dasi of Srimati Radharani. So, she is constantly, you can say she is the chief of staff, we like you to use modern terminology, of Srimati Radharani. So she arranges all the activities of Radharani so that Radharani can, uh, you know, please Lord Krishna or have her have association with Lord Krishna. So in the same way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani combined. And he gave these instructions to Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami didn't need these instructions. It's just a leela in the external world that he gave 10 days of instruction. Rupa Goswami never wouldn't need that, but still. And then Rupa Goswami wrote this detailed treatise, treatise on Krishna Bhakti for our benefit. So he propagated the desire of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is to spread the science of Krishna Bhakti to the whole world. It is, Srila Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Devotion that the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is like an unending beam of light. Just turn it on with a small switch, just like you turn on a light bulb. But the ray of light is unending. It just keeps traveling and traveling. So it's a bottomless, you know, it's very, very deep and it's bottomless. Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu. So that is, these are the four words that comprise the title of this book or this scripture, Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu. So all these are more or less self-evident to most of us who are familiar with the uh, Sanskrit or some related uh, language. So it is an ocean. Sindhu is a means ocean. So this is an entire ocean of Amrita. Amrita is... Nectar, we can say, I mean, there's no real English word. Amrita is the just the sweet liquid that gives immortality or gives the highest bliss. There are various ways which we can put together English words to describe Amrita. So it's an ocean of Amrita. What kind of Amrita? Of Bhakti Rasa. Of Rasa means the sweet juice. That's the Ras. We can say, you know, Amka Ras or whatever Ras. Uh, so so many rasa we have but here rasa of bhakti so bhakti has so many rasas in so many so there is not one fruit i like so many types of fruit juices similarly there are various rasas in which one can interact with lord krishna we have heard of for example the four rasas such as dasyaras like hanumanji he is in the dasyaras he's always blissful blissfully serving the Lord like a servant, always standing in attention. He, before Lord Ram, expresses his desire. He knows what he wants and he goes and gets it. Never Lord Ram has to even ask. That's the best servant. So Hanumanji is the epitome of Dasyaras. Then there is uh, Sakyaras, like a friend, like Arjun. He is like an epitome of a friend, all the other cowherd boys, the Gopas in Vrindavan. So they are in the Sakhiras, like a friend. Then there is Vatsalyaras, like a parent, uh, loving Krishna, like a parent. So like, you know, they, they are more protective. You know, Dasya will feel that Krishna is my protector. I will serve him. But if things get really tough, my master will show me the way. So ultimately, the master is bigger. And I am small. That is the bhava in dasya. Sakya is a little bit equal. Vatsalya, it gets a little reverse. Where the devotee feels, I have to protect Krishna. Krishna needs protection. Krishna doesn't need any protection, but that's the bhava. That's the mood of the devotee to try to, you know, he's so much in love of Krishna that he wants to take care of Krishna's uh, well-being. So that is vatsalya. 
and Madhurya Ras, like so Vatsalya Ras is like you know Nand Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, and so on. And Vats and Madhurya Rasa is are the gopis who are in love with Krishna. Srila Prabhupada calls it the conjugal love, like love between uh, Srimati Radharani and Lord Sri Krishna, or Mother Sita and Lord Ram, or between Mother Lakshmi and Lord Narayan. So that is in the all the in the Madhurya. There are many more rasas. We will quickly hint on them shortly. The so that is what the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu teaches us is to how to develop our intrinsic dormant love in one of these rasas. We don't know what rasa when we become, you know, uh, advanced in our spiritual progress. One will begin to have feelings of relationship with Krishna. In some rasa, most devotees may feel like they are the servant of Krishna and the dasya. That's very nice. So there is no rasa which is higher or lower. All rasas lead to shuddha prema. So um, it teaches us how to develop our dormant love for Lord Krishna. We all have that love intrinsically in our heart. We cannot perceive it right now. That is why we are running after external rasas which is like, you know, money, recognition, this, that, all these upadhis. Giving up all those upadhis, sarvapadhi venir muktam, and going after the real rasa, which is our relationship with Krishna. While being engaged in this material world, so it's not about becoming a, you know, going to a jungle. Again, that verse of, that we just discussed of, um, yukta vairagya comes in here. So being engaged in the material world, how can we make, progress in our Krishna Bhakti. So that is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. How to make progress in Krishna Bhakti while being in our present material bodies. Otherwise, this textbook is not relevant for this life. Then you can read it after going to the spiritual world. There you don't need a textbook. So, you know, the textbook is there for us in this material world while we are engaged in this material world to make progress in our Krishna Bhakti. Okay, so that is what Shri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is. In summary, we will unpack more of it as we go along. So the structure of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is like this. So there is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Can you see my mouse as I am moving it? Okay, great. So there is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, all of you, you know, can kind of make it, can understand uh, how like uh, these four lines and these four boxes means that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is divided into four parts. So it is a Sindhu. Sindhu means ocean. So it is an ocean which is divided into four parts. So if you divide an ocean into four parts, you can call one as the eastern division. You divide it into four like east, south, west and north. So you start from east and you go clockwise. So you start from east. Purva Vibhaga it is called. So it is known it is divided into Vibhagas or sections or divisions. So Purva Vibhag, Dakshin Vibhag, Paschim Vibhag and Uttar Vibhag. East, South, West and North. Each Vibhaga has Laharis. Lahari means wave. Lahar. So waves. So the eastern ocean or the eastern division is divided into four waves known as Samanya Bhakti. So in this basically we, Rupa Goswami presents the general principles of Krishna Bhakti. Okay. All the what is Krishna Bhakti and what are some of the characteristics of Shuddha, Shuddha Krishna Bhakti and what are some of its detailed characteristics. That is what will be covered in Samanya Bhakti section or the Samanya Bhakti Lahari or Samanya Bhakti wave. So that is the first wave. Second wave, which is the longest one, is Sadhan Bhakti. Sadhan Bhakti means Rupa Goswami will explain in detail the process. Or Sadhan is like the uh, means. In Hindi, we say Sadhan means a means. What is the means to perform Krishna Bhakti? How do we perform Krishna Bhakti? So a large part of this section describes the 64 
limbs or the 64 ways of performing Krishna Bhakti is a major part of this Sadhan Bhakti section. This is further divided into two sections, two parts known as Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti and Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti. We will cover those details as we go along. And then comes the advanced stage of Bhakti, which is described as Bhava Bhakti. So when one becomes advanced through the process of Vaidhi Bhakti or and or Raganuga Bhakti, one comes to the stage of Bhava, Bhava Bhakti, and then finally Prema Bhakti. So we will cover this again as we go along. And then there is the southern ocean or the southern division of the ocean, western and northern. These have five sections or five laharis, five waves, another five waves in the western and nine waves in the northern. Now for Bhakti Shastri and in this series, we will only cover eastern. So we will not, that's why I have shown this in smaller boxes. We will not be covering this. this. These are very advanced topics. We may cover it at some point of time. I am already feeling unqualified to talk about just the Eastern division. What to speak of these more advanced divisions. Southern, Western and Northern are more advanced. We might cover it later or some other devotee, advanced devotee might come and cover. We don't know. Bhakti Shastri only requires Eastern division and that is enough. The knowledge in Eastern Division is enough for making uh, complete progress towards the spiritual world. So this is not something which will leave us halfway or midway. It's not a half solution. It is still the full solution. Little bit more details. So that same graph or chart, I have shown it in the form of a table here. We have Eastern Division of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Southern Division, Western Division and Northern Division. And like I showed you, the first one has four waves. And so this is the Bhakti Shastri syllabus. The Southern Division have five waves, five waves and nine waves. And like we discussed, Samanya Bhakti, general principles of Bhakti. Sadhan Bhakti means the means of the 64 limbs of performing Bhakti. Then advanced stage of Bhakti and the final stage of Bhakti. Advanced stage is Bhava Bhakti. Final stage is Prema Bhakti. And here are the verses of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So one, the first letter, the first number stands for the division. So one dot, everything is one dot here. In this one, it will be two dot. Here it will be three dot. Here it will be four dot. And then the lahari or wave is the next number. So 1.1. And as you can see, there are 46 verses in the first lahari or the first wave. So, and I told you the next wave is the longest one, 309 verses, 61 verses and the 21 verses. Total, it comes to 437 verses in the Eastern Division. And I have mapped it to the chapters of Nectar of Devotion as well. So the introduction and the first chapter of Nectar of Devotion book by Srila Prabhupada covers the Samanya Bhakti. Chapters 2 to 16 so they are like 15 chapters. They cover the Sadhan Bhakti. 17 and 18 cover Bhava Bhakti. And 19th chapter covers Prema Bhakti. So in 19 chapters, we will complete the Bhakti Shastri course or this series on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So even though there are, as you can see, 51 chapters in the book, uh, Srila Prabhupada has given us the full Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. We will only go through 19 chapters. That is the prescribed syllabus by Mayapur Institute. Total, it has about 2,136 verses in all. So roughly, you, you can see that it is almost like one-fourth or something like that. Or less. Okay. Then, what are the resources that I have used? And you are, you know... Um, you are welcome to use them as well. The primary textbook is Nectar of Devotion, which is the English summary study by Srila Prabhupada. So that is available on Veda Base. Full book is like everything. Bhagavad Gita was available. Srimad Bhagavatam is available. Nectar of Instruction was available. So is Nectar of Devotion. Fully available, free of cost on vedabase.io. 
or you can purchase it from our temple, this con Portland, or you can purchase it from your local temple. Then there are two primary commentaries on the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu verse by verse commentaries by Srila Jiva Goswami. Kindly mute whoever it is. So uh, the first one is by Sri Jiva Goswami. And that is known as Durgama Sangamani Tika. So uh, he has made Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu easy. It is Durgama. Hard to understand, he says. And through his commentary, he has made it easy. I have heard from uh, Hari Parshad Prabhu, a uh, very, very elevated, advanced uh, devotee. And uh, uh, that... So Jiva Goswami is one of the six Goswamis. We sang the Ashtakam uh, earlier. He is also the nephew of, G of Rupa Goswami. So he is one of the younger six Goswamis. Rupa Goswami is the elder, elder one. And Rupa Goswami was writing, as he was writing the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Jiva Goswami used to fan him. But there was a hidden agenda uh, that he had. They were both smart, extremely, extremely smart people, probably the smartest in the world at the time. He would see what Rupa Goswami is writing, kind of like over the shoulder. And he would keep understanding what is being written. And wherever he was like, couldn't understand, he would ask Rupa Goswami for clarifications and Rupa Goswami would give clarifications and he would remember those. So those clarifications that Rupa Goswami gave to Jiva Goswami became the commentary, the Durgama Sangamani Tika. Tika means a commentary. So basically, we not only have the real verses by Rupa Goswami, we have all the clarifications he provided to Jiva Goswami documented in the Durgam Sangamani Tika. That makes it such an important commentary to the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Then what also what we have is the Bhakti Sar Pradarshini Tika by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who came about 200 years later, or about 100, 150 years later, I can't remember the thing, the detail. And he wrote a Bhakti Sara Pradarshini, how the Bhakti is presented, Pradarshini. So he brings out the Bhakti more deeply through his commentary on the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So I have consulted these. You don't, as Bhakti Shastri students, you don't need to consult these. I will, I have, now it is available, English translations. Now both of those are in Sanskrit. But uh, one of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, His Holiness Bhanu Swami, has done English translation of those commentaries, and that is available. Uh, not on Veda base, you have to purchase it. It's available on Kindle for like $10 or something, very cheap. And uh, you can go through that if you want, or you can just stick to Nectar of Devotion for Bhakti Shastri, doing all your homeworks, passing the test with 100%, with flying colors. All you need is nectar of devotion and nothing else. You don't need any of this. I am just sharing with you all the resources that are available. There are some additional resources and references available. Another disciple of Srila Prabhupada, His Holiness Dhanurdhar Swami, has written a book called Waves of Devotion. Very good study guide, like a cliff notes kind of book on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or Nectar of Devotion. I have uploaded a copy in Google Classroom for the benefit of Bhakti Shastri students. Uh, this book is no longer available. It's out of print. There is a website called wavesofdevotion.com. That is where it is supposed to be sold. For last one year, I have been visiting that website every month. Whenever I, you know, uh, I just visit it as, uh, when I remember. Always it shows sold out. So anyway, another nice devotee, uh, His Grace Gauranga Darshan Prabhu has recently come out with this Subodhini called Bhakti Rasamrita Subodhini and many of you, I, I got a few copies from India and many of you took it from me. So those who have got it, great. It is available on Kindle also for like 2 or 3 or 5 dollars. So very cheap. You can obtain the Kindle version. And His Grace Hari Parshad Prabhu has a lot of videos on YouTube on Bhakti Rasri, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. They are very, they are very deep, as you can imagine. Uh, he he doesn't do anything shallow. So whatever, you know, he goes straight, like deep into it. 
So Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu is very voluminous. So obviously he doesn't have full coverage of entire Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, but there are certain portions which Hari Parshat Prabhu has covered. Wherever he has covered, it's extremely, extremely deep and very, very sweet. All right. So with that, let's begin. So I don't think we can cover all the six verses today, but let's try to cover the uh, first portion of what is known as. So what was the first portion? The first portion is Samanya Bhakti. The general principles of Krishna Bhakti is what we will start. And there are 46 verses in this. Now we won't go through every verse. We'll just go fast through some portions. But the initial ones we'll go through one by one. Okay. So that's where we are. So first topic is six verses. That's the first section. First six verses. So BRS. BRS stands for Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. That's the abbreviation. So the first six verses are the Mangala Charan of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So most scriptures start with Mangala Charan. Like Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, the first three verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are known as the Mangala Charan of Srimad Bhagavatam. Similarly, the first six verses of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu are known as the Mangala Charan of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. What is the meaning of Mangala Charan? Mangal. Mangal. Okay, Mangal. Sabka Mangal ho. Mangal Maya. Mangal means auspicious or success. Everything should be auspicious, successful. So it is an auspicious invocation. What is the meaning of auspicious invocation? So when specifically talking about Mangala Charan verses of any scripture, it does one or more of these three things. Okay. The first is it defines the book's objective. What is the objective of the book or the Shastra? And next is it allows the author of that book or the Shastra to offer obeisances or express his gratitude, his homage to various entities, whomever he feels inspired to offer it to. And the third one is that Mangala Charna offers benedictions on the readers, whoever is receiving this knowledge, what benedictions the author wants to uh, bestow on the reader. So if you are writing a book, you wouldn't want to give it to a reader and say, may you get nothing out of the book. Would any author say like that? Hey, here is the book I wrote. I wish you don't understand it. Or I wish that you don't like it. Or I wish that you get nothing out of it. Nobody will say like that. What he will say on the contrary is, may you get benefit from it. Or he may say what kind of benefit you might get from it. So that is offering benediction on the reader. So these are the three things. So the first six verses I have given like a one line summary of what each of these verses contain. And we will go through some details in each verse by verse. So today we will only cover Mangalacharam. So we will not be covering the Samanya Bhakti aspect, the characteristics of Bhakti that will come next time. So again, you know, it's a gradual start to the book. And I have mapped it to the paragraph in Nectar of Devotion. So the first verse, again, the Nectar of Devotion doesn't have uh, verses. Let me show you Nectar of Devotion for those who may... So I'll open the Google screen. So this is our library, Bhakti Veda based library, vedabase.io. And if you scroll down here, you will see Nectar of Devotion. And we'll go to the introduction portion. So these are paragraphs that I was showing you, paragraph numbers in the introduction. So you can see here, Paragraph. Now, numbering is not there in the paragraph. You have to count. So this is paragraph number one. This is paragraph number two, paragraph number three, paragraph number four, five, and six. So these six paragraphs map to the first six verses one on one. First paragraph is mapped to first verse. So whatever is there in the first verse in the Sanskrit, in the book, is what is there in 
uh, this in this place in in this uh, in this paragraph. Okay. All right. So I will stop the sharing and I'll share my slides. Yeah. Okay, so this is paragraph number in Nectar of Devotion book in the introduction chapter. Srila Prabhupada chose the introduction chapter to cover some of these verses. So 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1, which means 1 stands for Eastern Division, dot 1 stands for Samanya Bhakti, Lahari or Wave, and dot 1, the third one stands for the verse number. So it is the division number dot wave number dot verse number all right so 1.1.1 1. 1. 1 is establishing the book's objective now who is writing this book who is writing these verses can somebody answer Ila, Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami is writing these verses yes very nice so the first one he is establishing all glories you will see a word jayate all glories jayate you know like we say, you know, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. So, you know, we are glorifying Srila Prabhupada. So in the same way, jayate to Lord Krishna. And not just Krishna jayate. That could have been just two words. Or Shri Krishna jayate or Shri Krishna ki jai. Instead of just saying that, he has composed a whole verse. And the verse is going into that Krishna is the reservoir of all rasas. All the rasas are fully present in their full capacity within Lord Shri Krishna. So that is the objective of the book to explain us what are the various, the entire science of bhakti rasa. And all these rasas are in the, in bhakti, not in jnana or karma aspects, just bhakti. So that's why it is bhakti, rasa, amrita, sindhu and glories to him. And then in the first paragraph, Srila Prabhupada invokes auspiciousness for his summary study as well. Obviously, this is not part of Rupa Goswami's verse because Srila Prabhupada is writing the book. So he adds one line of auspiciousness invocation in the first paragraph and obeisances to his guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. So that is added by Srila Prabhupada. Second verse is obeisances. So you can see book's objective. So one of the uh, objectives of Mangalacharan is being covered right here in the first verse. Second verse is obeisances to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the one who gave instructions to Sri Rupa Goswami, based on whose inspiration he wrote the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So he's offering his obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We'll go into the details a little later, but that's the he's showing his gratitude, his offering his homage or his. Uh, Pranam, obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than Sri Krishna. Then he offers obeisances to his guru, Sri Sanatan Goswami. So he is also one of the six Goswamis, Sanatan Goswami. And he is the elder brother of Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami considers Sanatan Goswami as his guru. So he is offering obeisances to his guru. Then in the third one, or uh, the fourth verse, which basically is the third one in the obeisances section, he's offering obeisances to all the pure devotees. So all everybody else is also covered there by Srila Rupa Goswami. Then he invokes benediction on all the readers or all the receivers of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And for the success of the science of bhakti, over jnana, karma, and other impersonalistic philosophies, which are not directly related to bhakti of Krishna or bhakti of Bhagavan, taking shelter. Karma and jnana is more like, I will do it. I will do my jnana, my tapa, and I will obtain spiritual realization. So you do it on your own. There is no aspect of falling down and asking Krishna for help. So that is bhakti. So, which is devoid success to all the people who are reading this and may they be uh, absorbed in the aspect of bhakti and stay far away from jnana, karma and other impersonalist philosophies. And finally, 
in the sixth verse, he establishes a, another objective of the book, which is that devotees who are reading it, so may and its combination of invocation of the benediction, as well as establishing the objective that the devotees who are receiving this book or this Shastra, who are reading it, may they relish the various rasas described in this book in relation to Lord Sri Krishna. So which means they, may they establish a rasika relationship with Krishna. A rasik, uh, may they uh, become devotees of Lord Krishna in one of the rasas that are described. So these are the first six verses, a summary of the first six verses. Now, let us go into the verses themselves. So we will do a quick uh, discussion on or a, you know, a description of these verses. Our uh, esteemed commentators such as uh, Sri Jiva Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur have written detailed commentary. So if we start going into that, it will take uh, many hours. So I have summarized it. Srila Prabhupada also gave a one paragraph only. He could have also written like 10 pages. So we will discuss um, a summary. So the first verse goes like this. Akhila rasa amrita murti hi praser mara ruchi rudha tara ka pali hi kalita shyama lalito radha preyan vidhur jayati So here you will see the word jayati. So okay, there is jayati. May there be all glories to Lord Krishna because Krishna is the reservoir of all rasas. Right? So my question is, where is Krishna in this verse? Do you see Krishna anywhere? I'm telling you, this is the uh, glories of Krishna. The song is the movie. Radha Priyan. Radha Priyan. Achha, okay. <laughs> that is very nice. Very nice. Akhila Rasa Murti. Akhila Rasa. Okay. Yeah. Rasa Murti. Murti. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. Yes. But our commentators, our esteemed commentators, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, the first word that they pick, okay, because uh, Rasamrita Murti, and again, are more for those who are Rasika, who who go into the Vrindavan Krishna, okay. They are not in the Dwaraka Krishna mood where he is the king. There, the rasa is not that sweet of like, you know, between Mother Yashoda and and uh, Krishna. Everybody knows Krishna is king and he is the supreme lord. You know, everybody is uh, in the Aishwarya or, you know. So, to establish that part for all people, not even outside of the Vrindavan mood, all these lines that you pointed out, Akhila Rasamrita Murti, Radha, Preyan, etc., etc., are in the Vrindavan mood. The overriding to all of these, the common one is Viduhu. So, Viduhu is the primary word that is referring to Krishna. Why? Because Viduhu, there are many meanings or, of Viduhu. He is all-powerful. He alone can bestow the supreme bliss, the highest bliss, including Prema. He removes suffering, even material suffering and suffering from material entanglements, even by demons, even to demons by liberating them. The demons come to attack Krishna to kill them. He liberates them. <laughs> you know? So he says, okay, you want to kill me, but I will do you a great favor. And he alone is the cause of everything. Now, all these word by word have been explained in great detail by our Acharyas, we would not have the time to go through it. So this is the primary reference to Lord Krishna, even those who are unable to understand his, the sweetness of his Vrindavan potencies. Now comes the Vrindavan potencies. So I said Jayati is all glories to Krishna. So Vidur Jayati or Viduh Jayati. So all glories to the Lord that Supreme Lord who is all-powerful, He is the cause of everything, Sarva Karana Karanam, etc. Then comes the more sweeter aspects, the rasa, the sweet juice of understanding who is Krishna. 
अखिल रसा somebody could mute maybe akhila rasa so he is the akhila means all or entirety that is akhila so he is akhila rasa he has all the rasas within him that is akhila rasa and there are 12 rasas described in bhakti rasamrita sindhu out of which five are primary and seven are secondary so uh the primary five are shantarasa dasya sakya vatsalya and madhurya and there are seven more and there is a verse in the shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto 43rd chapter and 17th verse where all the 12 rasas are depicted so if time permits towards the end or something we'll see we'll go into it or maybe we should just quickly review it now what do you think It's a beautiful yeah. verse. Okay, so uh, let's just finish this slide. So he's Akhila Rasa means he's the reservoir of all rasas. Depending on the devotees' rasa, even the demons, they perceive Krishna in a particular relationship or in a particular manner or in a particular rasa. So. the five primary ones there is that's not for demons now there is a, a rasa known as bhayanak ras you it's a one of the seven secondary ones bhayanak so the demons uh, perceive krishna as bhayanak like in bhagavad gita he he says you know death i am so you know one perceives krishna as death so you know anyway and amrita murti hi rasam akhil rasamrita murti hi so amrita murti he is a murti of amrita he is a murti his form is supremely blissful so that is the meaning of akhil rasamrita murti and then so we covered the first line what we see in the blue color and viduh jayati in this in this slide the remaining lines we'll cover on the next slide but before that let us quickly review this uh this uh verse so it is in shrimad bhagavatam so we'll go to veda base we'll go to shrimad bhagavatam we'll go to 10th canto because it's a 10th canto 43rd chapter so this is when lord krishna is entering uh the arena of kamsa if you remember in the krishna leela uh kams kams had invited uh number 17 okay kams invited finally when he could not kill krishna by sending all the demons like putana and so on aghasur bakasur etc etc finally he said you know we cannot kill krishna in his home ground like he has a home ground advantage in sports also we say right so let us call him to our home ground which is mathura there we will have an advantage so krishna says okay no problem i'll come to your place so he is entering that arena where kans is there and there's a big uh, you know he arranges a fight uh, between uh, krishna and his uh, his uh, um malla yodhas malla yodhas means wrestlers in fact you will see that's the first word malla naam so uh, thinking that i have such powerful wrestlers they will finish krishna in one second so anyway he arranges that fight so krishna is entering the arena and there are various people in the arena it's like your uh, what's that movie uh, where uh, famous movie uh, gladiator yeah you know like you know there they used to arrange fights and everybody would sit in a like a colosseum and watch the fight so various people are looking at krishna in various rasas and that is described here and all the 12 rasas are covered here okay all the 12 so i will point out some of them but in interest of time we will uh, or maybe we can go i'll just point out all the 12 okay so um the uh, malla naam uh, ashna um, ashnir so ashnihi so these uh, wrestlers are looking at krishna like a uh, ashni like a lightning or a thunderbolt 
So that is like a Veer Ras, chivalry. So one of the secondary Rasas is Veer Ras. Or in, so they are looking forward to fight Krishna. Of course, they will get eliminated uh, quickly, but still they are looking forward for the fight. Then there is uh, Nidam Naravaraha. So all the males who are sitting in the arena, you are looking, they thought uh, that uh, um, we were the, you know, beautiful men, you know, strong, beautiful, whatever, Mr. Universe. But on looking at Krishna, they thought that they are thinking, wow, he is so much more beautiful than us. So they are captivated in that uh, sort of rasa with Krishna. And that is known as Vishmaya or um, Astonishment Rasa. Also known as Adbhut Ras. I thought I am the best, but I saw somebody more, uh, you know, beautiful or more, uh, uh, you know, uh, beautiful than me. Then, so that is Vishmaya or Adbhuta or um, uh, Astonishment. Then for Strinam, for the women, uh, Smaraha. So the women are looking at Krishna and they are feeling like, uh, you know, Cupid has hit them. They are, you know, uh, having this Madhuryaras feeling of uh, attraction to this beautiful Krishna, uh, the best possible, uh, you know, person that they have seen. Then comes um, um, Gopanam, all these cowherd boys, Swajanaha. So uh, that is referring to the... Sakharas as a friend. So all these Gopas are looking at Krishna as a um, friend and Swajana and they are laughing also. So there are two rasas mixed here. What Another secondary rasa is Hasyaras or uh, that of laughter. Then there is um, um, Asatam uh, Kshiti Bhujam Shasta. So that is like uh, uh, all the kings the various now Kamsa is not included here. His, his rasa is little later. So these all these friends of Kamsa, whom he had alliance with, and they are looking at this is the guy you know who is the enemy of our uh, ally Krishna uh, Kamsa. So they are looking at him with uh, Raudra ras or anger. So like a as a punisher. So like we will punish him uh, or you know he needs to be eliminated. This Krishna. So they are looking at anger or raudra ras. That is also a second secondary ras. Then comes Swapitro Shishu. This is Vatsalya ras. The older men uh, and women are uh, uh, mainly men. Pitro, it is written, are looking at Krishna as a Shishu. Oh, my child. He's so sweet like a child. Young boy. Now comes this one. Um, Bhojapati. So Bhojapati. So Kamsa is in the Bhoja dynasty. So Kamsa is looking as death. Uh, oh, this is my death. I sent so many demons to kill him. He killed all the demons. Maybe today is my last day. So this is known as Bhayanak uh, Ras. So he is getting afraid on looking at Krishna. And um, then uh, there is Virad, uh, Virad Avidusham. So there all the general people are looking at Krishna in the Virat Rup as material energy. And that is known as the Vibhatsaras or the ghastly. Okay, we don't know what destruction is going to happen here. Some calamity is going to fall today. You know, it's the battle of the mightiest. This Krishna and our Kamsa, we don't know who will win. But one will win, one will lose. Either way, there is going to be some you know major calamity, major destruction is going to happen. And then uh, the second last one is Tattvam Param Yoginam. So all the yogis are looking at Krishna as the Tattva. So this is Shantaras. So they are looking at Krishna and saying, ah, he is the Tattva. He is the essence of the whole universe. And uh, finally, Vrishnis uh, Paradevata as in the Dasyaras. He is our, uh, you know, Supreme Lord, we need to serve him. So in this way, iti uh, viditaha uh, uh, rangam gataha sa agrajaha. So 
when Krishna entered with his Agra, Agraj, Agraj means elder brother, right. Balaramji, these various people saw Krishna in this various moods. So if you see, all the 12 rasas have been covered in this verse. And the same Krishna, it's not like Krishna had become 12 entities. He didn't clone himself uh, 12 times. But based on their relationship with Krishna, they are seeing Krishna in different, different rasas. So that is the Krishna is the reservoir, that one same Krishna is the reservoir of all rasas. Okay. I hope I explained, um, uh, you know, these are very deep topics, actually. And it's not easy to, you know, I, I don't have a full understanding of these myself. I'm sharing how much ever I understand. Let's complete this verse. It's already 7.20, so we'll go fast. Now comes the beauty, very beautiful part. Prasamara ruchi ruddha taraka palihi. So, uh, there are two gopis named here, Tara, Taraka and Pali, or her full name is Palika. So he controls these gopis by his radiant beauty. So the gopis are attracted to, so this is all Madhurya Rasa, but the gopis are being attracted to Krishna due to Krishna's beauty. And then there are two more gopis, Lalita and Shamala or Shyama, as it is mentioned here. He has absorbed the minds of the gopis, Shama and Dalita. They have nothing else to think about other than Krishna. Like Bhagavad Gita, he says, no, Tasmar, um, Sarveshu Kaleshu, Mam Anusmara Yuddhacha. So they are doing, they don't have to fight a war, these gopis, but they are 100% Sarveshu Kaleshu, Mam Anusmara. So they are constantly thinking of Krishna. Their minds are absorbed in Krishna. So Krishna has completely, you know, uh, is the only thing in their minds, nothing else. They are always thinking of Krishna, Krishna Smarana. So he, he has absorbed their minds. So that so we have covered two pairs of gopis, Taraka and Palika and Shyama and Lalita. And now comes the topmost gopi, Radha Preyan. So he gives pleasure to Radha Preyan. He gives pleasure. He gives his love to Srimati Radharani, the topmost gopi. So there is a sweet, very sweet difference that has been pointed out by Sri Jiva Goswami, which is that Lord Krishna is the enjoyer for the first two pairs of gopis. He controls or the gopis are being attracted to Lord Krishna by his beauty. And Lord Krishna has kind of captivated the, you know, the two, uh, the, the two gopis, their eyes and all their other senses have been captivated by Krishna. Similarly, Krishna has captivated the mind of these two other gopis, Shyama and Lalita. So Krishna is the captivator and these two pairs of gopis are the captivated. But Srimati Radharani is different. Krishna is captivated by her. So she is the topmost devotee and Krishna gets captivated. She, he cannot understand who is Radharani. He cannot understand why he is attracted so much to Srimati Radharani. So obviously Srimati Radharani also has Krishna in her mind all the time. And she is also attracted by the completely by the beauty of Lord Sri Krishna. So that is there. But Krishna is fully, fully, fully attracted to Srimati Radharani. In Krishna's mind, only Srimati Radharani is there. So that is the difference that is being brought out by Sri Jiv Goswami. That for the first two pairs, Krishna is the enjoyer. But for Srimati Radharani, he is the giver of the pleasure to her. Okay. So that is the sort of the sweetness that is being brought out here. And that is why uh, the all the Gaudiya Vaishnava, uh, our Acharyas, uh, the instructions they give us is to become dear more to Srimati Radharani than Sri Krishna. Because Krishna's mind is already full. If you are trying to get the attention of Krishna, good luck. He is already, his attention is 100%, uh, you know, 
uh, accounted for. It has been, uh, what you say? It has been uh, booked. No more, uh, you are on a waiting list and it is an eternal waiting list. You will never get off the waiting list. But if you become dear to Srimati Radharani, then Krishna has a, you know, incentive. Oh, I am always thinking of Radharani, but who is this other fellow? He seems to be dear to Radharani. So let me try to, you know, look at him. Why is Radharani looking at uh, this fellow? So we should try to get the attention of Srimati Radharani because Krishna is completely captivated by Srimati Radharani. So that is the understanding of this verse. There is another meaning also comparing Lord Krishna to the full moon. But we will skip that meaning for the sake of time. Okay, very beautiful meaning is there. If you are interested, it's all there in the commentaries. The, the Durgam Sangamani Tika uh, is all there. Second verse. Okay. So in this one, uh, Sri Rupa Goswami is offering his gratitude to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here he says, um, Hridi Asya Preranaya uh, Pravartito Aham Varaka Rupo Pi Tasya Hareha Padakamalam Vande Chaitanya Devasya. So, what it means is that Hridi Asya Preranaya, that in my heart I got the Prerana of writing Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, right? Yasya means from whom he got that prerana, that inspiration? Who did he get it from? You remember? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thank you. Pravartito aham varaka rupo api and I am uh, engaged in this writing of so yasya here hridi yasya yasya is referring to chaitanya mahaprabhu so from whose prerana or inspiration in my heart i got engaged in this pravartito i got engaged in writing this shastra even though varaka rupo api that i am like a varaka means fool so rupa goswami is being taking a very humble position and he's saying i am a fool but I was inspired by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Tasya Hareha Padakamalam Vande Chaitanya Devasya. To that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who inspired me, even though I'm a fool, he inspired me to write it. Okay, great. He has inspired me. I will fulfill his desire to write about the uh, science of bhakti. To his Padakamalam, his lotus feet, Tasya Hareha, that Hari. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is no different than Hari or Krishna. Vande Chaitanya Devasya. He is my Lord, Deva, and I offer my Vande, my obeisances to him. So, just a few bullet points here that Rupa Goswami received inspiration from Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wants to serve the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, by writing the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And Tasya Hare. So here he says, Yasya. Hidi Yasya Preranaya. Tasya Hare. So Rupa Goswami is clearly saying that the one whose inspiration and he names him Vande Chaitanya Devasya, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is no different than Hari, is Hari himself. And he considers himself a fool. But one who has received inspiration from Krishna, that's it. You know, you don't need anything else. Dadami buddhi yogam tam. So, you know, when Krishna gives uh, blessings, that's the highest intelligence. And so he is offering obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, from the commentaries, uh, some notes I have taken, which I am sharing with you from the commentaries of these two great Acharyas, that what is written is that Sri Rupa Goswami Gos is the very first Acharya to write such a detailed treatise on the science of Krishna Bhakti. Of course, it's all there in Srimad Bhagavatam. But Srimad Bhagavatam is so big and Bhakti, you have to like, kind of like, uh, you know, find it like, uh, you know, you have, but it's not presented in a very systematic way. So Chaitanya, uh, Rupa Goswami has made it very, very systematic. And 
he was endowed with this potency by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed Krishna Bhakti by his example. He didn't write much at all. So he empowered his primary disciple, Sri Rupa Goswami, to write scriptures on Bhakti, as was demonstrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But so he showed the uh, by example and he left the writing to Sri Rupa Goswami. So even though Rupa Goswami is the author, the inspiration comes from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what are some of the learnings that we get from this verse? The learnings that we get are, if you are inspired by someone, you serve them. Rupa Goswami was inspired by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, okay, I'm going to write it down for the benefit of future generations. I have received it from me, you. I will pay it forward. That's the term we use, right? Pay it forward. Don't pay it back. Pay it forward. So he served Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very nicely by writing everything he learned uh, from him. And one who, another learning is one who sincerely desires to support, to, uh, to serve the Supreme Lord or his pure devotees is never a fool. Okay. It is the highest intelligence to serve. Uh, such a person is the most intelligent of all. And uh, yeah, so these are some of the points to be covered or to be learned from this second verse. Okay, let's uh, quickly go through the third verse and then we will probably call it a day. Five or six more minutes. The third verse he is offering obeisances to his Guru, Srila Sanatan Goswami. So, um, uh, you will see a very nice point here, but let's go through this. Vishrama Mandiratya Tasya Sanatana Tanor Mad Ishasya Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhur Bhavatu Sadayam Pramodaya. I am not very clear about the meter of this verse, so my Singing is a little kind of, you know, not in the right meter or tune. I have to still figure it out. So I apologize for that. So um, what is being said here is that, so this is obeisances to his guru, Srila Sanatana Goswami. So what he's saying here is that uh, Vishrama Mandira. So you see this word Vishrama Mandira. Tasya Vish Vishrama Mandira uh, uh, Mandiratya. Uh, mandiratya tasya sanatana. So, in who, tasya means who, the one who is the Vishrama Mandira, which means he is the resting place. Vishrama is resting, Mandira means place or abode. Um, of who? The previous verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, in, in we can translate it like in whose heart or who is the resting place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, tasya sanatana, to that sanatana, tanor mad ishasya, he is my isha, my ishwar, my lord. That sanatana, so the way you would translate this is, that sanatana, who is the abode of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the vishram mandir of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is my lord. Because guru is like god or lord, so is my lord. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhur Bhavatu Sadayam Pramodaya. That uh, this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, may this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bhavatu may become Sadayam, a, a always Pramodaya, giver of pleasure. So may this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu give pleasure always to Sri Sanatan Goswami, who is the abode of or whose heart is the abode of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is what is being said in this verse. Okay. So what are some of the points? Sri Sanatan Goswami's heart is the resting place of Lord Krishna or Lord Chaitanya. And Sri Sanatan Goswami is Sri Rupa Goswami's Lord, Isha or Guru. He is saying he is Mad Ishasya, my Ishwara, toward him Ishasya. May this Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu be pleasurable. He dedicates Sri Bhakti Samrit Sindhu for the pleasure of Sri Sanatan Goswami. So these are the points being made in this verse. All right. And some notes from the commentaries. Uh, 
where is this? Yeah. So very nice, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jiva Goswami brings out this commentary. Mad Isha could mean that Rupa Goswami is calling Lord Krishna as his Isha. Okay. So if you see in the previous verse, he says, uh, Mad Ishasya and Vishrama Mandiratya. So, whose heart is the uh, abode and of Ishwara of, and that is my Ishwara. So he could say yes, you know, who's uh, who is the Ishwara that Rupa Goswami is talking about? It could be that Lord Krishna is also his Ishwara. Of course, Sanatan Goswami is the Ishwara. Maybe Lord Krishna also. Maybe Lord Chaitanya. Both of them are Sanatana. Means our eternal lords. Or it could mean Sanatan Goswami as well. So we don't know who it means. So this was a question. So this is a great play of words by the great poet, Sri Rupa Goswami. And this was a uh, clarification that Jiva Goswami asked Rupa Goswami, what do you mean by this? What exactly do you mean? And Rupa Goswami didn't give an answer. So he left it like as a, as you say, an exercise for the reader to figure out. And it is again, you know, there is no, no one meaning. All meanings are correct. It depends on the sweetness or the taste of the reader. Anyway, so the learnings that we get from here is that Guru should be worshipped as if he is the Lord himself. The disciple should make no difference between Guru and Bhagavan. And Guru's heart, one should consider, the disciple should consider the Guru's heart to be the abode of the Supreme Lord. He is saying here, Rupa Goswami is saying that the heart of Sanatan Goswami is the Vishram Mandir of Bhagavan. And one should, and he says, may this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu give permanent pleasure that's what he said, Sadayam Pramodaya, Sadayam Pramodaya, last line. So may it always give pleasure to the Guru. And if Guru is pleased, then Lord is pleased. So for the disciple, pleasing the Guru should be the number one priority because if Guru is pleased, Krishna is pleased. So these are some of the learnings that we get from the third verse. So yeah, today we covered sort of the we went into little bit details of the first two Shat Goswami Ashtakam. So I'm just summarizing what we covered today. Next time onwards, we'll just sing it. Then we went through the four KVMs, memorization verses for especially Bhakti Shastri students who will have to reproduce it in the exam with translation. Next time onwards, we'll again just recite the Sanskrit and we will cover those verses when they come in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. And then we went into the structure, the purpose of Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, how it is divided into various uh, divisions of the ocean and various waves or laharis within each one. We will be covering only Eastern division, all that we covered. We also covered what is the purpose of Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, what commentaries exist, what supporting uh, you know textbooks or guides exist. We covered all that. And then we covered the Mangalacharan summary of the first six verses of Mangalacharan and we went into the details of the first three out of those. Next week we will go through remaining three and we will cover some of the very important verses, the most important one being 1.1.11. We will start the discussion on that. Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karma dhyanavritam anukulyena krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttama. That verse is very very important in Bhagavad Gita as it is Srila Prabhupada quotes it three times in different, different purports. That's how important it is. So we will cover all that next week. So I'll stop my uh, presentation here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for patiently listening. Uh, are there any questions, comments or corrections? Hare so, Krishna have... Prabhuji. Yes, Mataji. So I just missed uh, about those 12 rasas. What was the first rasa you told? I just missed the first one. So the first one was the Malla, Malla Yodhas. So they are in chivalry or Viraras. 
they want to like okay this boy is coming and my job is to fight with him come on you know as i say they do like okay. you know <laughs> they pack their thighs and uh, arms and get ready for a fight oh okay oh, oh uh, and then you said um the two rasas were uh, like um, mixed kind of that's a sakya and laughter right yes sakya it's not sakya it's sakya and laughter yes among the okay uh, the gopas the cowherd boys who were there thank you prabhuji hari krishna prabhuji and the last rasa in that the last the were krishnis uh, who were in the dasya rasa vrishnis 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 okay so the rasa is called vishnu so no 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 vishnis are the sort of the clan or the category of yeah the so the it's dasya rasa yeah okay thank you anything else okay thank you very much for patiently giving your time and giving me an opportunity to say something about this uh, magnificent magnificent shastra shri bhakti rasamrita sindhu shri rup goswami prabhupad ki jay jagat jay. guru prabhupad ki jay jay, jay. hare krishna hare krishna thank you, thank you so much thank you hare krishna i think this is the first hare time hare i understood the, the structure of this bhakti rasamrita thank you so much हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण माता जी थैंक यू हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण